Hi, welcome to MindGrub TV. I'm Kim Paradise. Recently, we sat down with a group of cybersecurity leaders from the Maryland, D.C., and Virginia region for a discussion led by Andy Bonilla, CISO from Siena, and also Todd Marks, our CEO of MindGrub. And when asked about what advice they would give the next generation of cybersecurity professionals, it was very interesting to hear what they had to say. Let's take a look. I'll, I'll make a comment. I just uh, did a thing on Saturday with, with 16 cyber grads. Um, and I was shocked that when I said that you have to have a lab on your own, like, because they asked me, what is the number one thing we can do to like make ourselves more attractive? And I asked, I had a raise of hands, how many people have their own lab? And they, did, they didn't, like the majority of them didn't. And I was like, you go through four years of school, but you only do what the school's providing you. And we all know the best engineers, like the guy that I want to hire is the one that's playing with this at home on their free time. Um, so to me, that would be the biggest piece of advice. And I told them every single one of them needs to go. They didn't even know where to get a VM. And the, I mean, these are JMU. I'm sorry, throwing JMU under the bus, but um these are cyber grads, JMU, that are in their fourth year in a capstone project with us. And I'm like, you, you don't have a lab or a server and you don't have to do that. So that's that's my recommendation. Yeah. We get there yeah, with totally, everything. That's one of our interview true. questions with web engineers. How many websites did you maintain during college? And they're <laughs> like, you mean as a project? No, no, maintained during your four years in college. And some of them are like, oh man, that's wow, a couple dozen maybe? Others are like, well, zero, right? And it's so telling. Yeah. You're absolutely I, right. I, the, yeah. other thing, the other thing I could highly recommend is that they get into Capture the Flags. So there's an amazing competition at the collegiate level called uh, CCDC. It's really hot in this particular area, you know, the, the DC area. But that's the number one um, way that, um, that, the, that the defense con uh, companies and contractors uh, recruit is through that uh, CCDC competition. And the more they get engaged at, the better. For, on the flip side, if companies want to recruit and pull in that talent, they should stand up their own uh, capture the flag competitions and, and let these students self-identify and you pick the winners, you know, the top 10, all get invitations for hire. Now, I would say, right, uh, if I could plug our subtenant, we have, at MyGrub, we have a couple of incubators, but at the Mind Hub, we have a company called Point3. Um, they've been doing really well, but they, um, their software is capture the flag and they set those up for companies and run little mini tournaments. Um, so I would, looking hey, at Don, if I could, uh, if I could jump in, first of all, I wanted to say, I, I agree with something that, um, that, um, Andy said earlier that, uh, you know, when you're recruiting, you know, we're just kind of borrowing each other's people. So, you know, our firm, we're an independent technology and cyber leadership and advisory firm, extremely independent. If you're, uh, if you're looking for a new exciting opportunity, give me a call. But beyond that, I would say, uh, I would say, you know, if you, and I don't mean to be too sarcastic with this, but I, I guess I am a little bit sarcastic with this comment. If you want to be one of a hundred, I would say be as technical as you possibly can in this field. If you want to be, you know, um, one of one, be as business centric as you can be. Learn as much about the industry you're applying for. And then once you, once you land there, learn as much about the industry you're in as you possibly can, because, you know, the, you know, I agree with Andy, it, you know, the, the best thing we can do in this industry is not make it a technical industry, but make it a business uh, risk industry. And the best way to do that is really to understand the business. It's amazing. You know, Rick Arthur's on the, um, my CISO and our company. And, you know, it's amazing the people we talk to who, you know, they understand technology as CISOs and as cyber advisors, cyber leaders of the companies. They really don't understand the business and therefore they don't understand the business risk that their companies are in. And I don't understand how you can be a cyber you know, leader if you don't understand that. So my advice would be first understand your business and the technology follows, but that's probably. Uh, Chris? I think uh, actually Dave stole a lot of the thunder. I, I was going to make a similar <laughs> comment about how it's, Sorry, not Chris. About no, it's not all about technology. Like I was a history major, um, you know, I majored in graduation when I was in college with a minor in history uh, and now found my way to be, you know, the senior cyber advisor for the Department of the Navy. I came, you know, nobody would have guessed I came from that path. I'm not a keyboard guy. I'm not a ones and zeros guy. 
but for the Department of Defense and the Navy, the warfare applications of what we're trying to do, right? That's probably a strong suit for mine. And it's not, and then depending on where you've fallen in on the stack, right? I mean, I when we when we figure out what cybersecurity is as we're watching through this, there's so many different ways into the community. And you know, you don't have to necessarily always know the 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 you know the IP stack to be successful in this community. Somebody, somebody who just understands what that is and can translate that to somebody who has no idea what it is, um, is every bit as important as a guy who's going to be on a keyboard. So I also wouldn't discourage people from getting into cybersecurity because they don't have a cyber background. Uh, there's so many, so many avenues. Big and, industry. Yeah, Gerald, to your point, exactly, right? It's that combination of those three or four people that make up that Venn diagram of we all kind of cover down on one another. We create this thing in the aggregate. Um, I, and that's what teams of teams are, right? I mean, that's what, that's what this is all about. And of course the military gravitates to that, right? It's all about from a team perspective. Um, yeah, I wouldn't discourage anybody from trying to get into this just because they're not technical. But the one thing, mine, mine is simpler actually. Mine is don't be afraid to fail. Like I, I see too many people worried about, oh my goodness, I'm going to make the wrong decision. I promise everybody I ever talked to that you're going to fail. You're going to fail more times than you like. It's going to be painful. And I promise that's the best way to grow. I think if we try and tell people that they can get it right coming right out of college, we're, we're not doing our job. I haven't gotten it right and I'm not 25 anymore. <laughs> so I'm still trying to figure out how to get it right on a daily basis. I, I think we need to encourage people to, we need to encourage, and this is the Silicon Valley thing, failure is not a bad thing, right? Failure is not a bad thing. And I think if we can help people who fail, look, look you failed, you learned a way not to do something. Right? At Thomas Edison, <laughs> failed 177 times building the light bulb or something, and he got it right 178th time. Great, right, you're a just, technical person? Good. Fail forward. So when you fall, fail just forward. fall forward, <laughs> not back. <laughs> and fail well, and, fast. And I think this is where it comes to, you know, getting something simpler. I, I feel like too many of these folks that I'm talking to as they're entering the market are trying to fit themselves into a, you know, a role as opposed to knowing what they're passionate about and not spending some time into what's gonna motivate them to, to kind of like the comment of Brock of, if you wanna be in cyber and you haven't been ripping things apart and trying to figure out how to do it, it's like, why are you trying to be in cyber? You know, because you're yeah. not gonna to get to the nth degree if you, you don't do that. And yeah. you know, I, I sit there and I live in too much PowerPoint, but I'm ripping IoT apart at my home all the time just because I'm like, you can't help myself. You know? <laughs> and that's what I've done for 30 years in cyber is you know figuring things out. And I think that's where there's a lot of them that haven't really thought about what's going to get you to be able to do the 24 hours when you got to stay up and stay on mission, you know, and, and feel like you go home and you, you got something done as opposed to complain about why it was longer than eight hours. And I, and I think that's really where a lot of them need to look at what's motivating them because the jobs are endless. They'll find there's a hundred variations of a cyber job. But there's, but the jobs are endless and they're changing, right? I think that's the other thing we mistake is the job. Like I came out of college 20 years ago, whatever it was, and what I did then doesn't exist now. As a software developer, I sat for one thing. We didn't, it did never change. What I do today, I could never have mapped my path from here to there, right? I mean, I, you know, kind of took like a sawtooth curve, right? Some days I was doing really good. Some days I was doing really poorly. I think that constant learning is the trait that defines success. Constant learning and then the ability to, to try and fail yeah. is, the, is, is the keys you look for. And if we can, if we can see, I teach everybody who will listen. I'm like a bad preacher on a soapbox <laughs> if i can get people to learn just that they win because i can't promise them outcomes thanks for watching mind grub tv tune in for more